Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Today, John and I have the great pleasure of speaking with our love and relationship coach, Michelle Fabrica. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Art. Hi, John. Hey, Michelle. Uh, uh, re relationships is the word for me today. Hmm. Um, I have a college reunion coming up. Um, I won't tell you how many years, but um, I had a wonderful time in college. A lot of wonderful friends. I knew it was a, it was a small school, so I knew a lot of everybody. Kind of knew everybody. And um, last time I went to one of these reunions, it was a great time. But you know what is bothering me? I haven't kept in touch with anybody. Mm. Um, and thank goodness for the guys that are organizing the reunion. They they're in touch with everybody. They've got the list of emails and phones and you know god bless them for bringing us all together again <laughs> but i wonder what is it about me that i just don't it's not like i don't care about them or i don't think of them but i i just don't pick up the phone or the email and contact anybody i just you know here it is five years and i'll be glad to see everybody and i'll you know it'll be wonderful but why didn't why didn't I contact every? Why haven't I kept in touch? That's my question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've heard this from many people, so you're definitely not alone. I don't know if that makes you feel any better, but but I think it's really hard to stay connected to people. And I think, especially you know, during this pandemic in particular, but just in general, like many many of us want more connection, and maybe we're feeling isolated or lonely or whatever. And I'm not saying that's necessarily true about you, but but you know we just don't pick up the phone. And sometimes it's because our lives are busy and we have things we're regularly doing. People aren't on our radar because we're not thinking of them if we don't see them day to day and they're not, you know, in our regular experience, right? We don't think of right. them. But oftentimes it's, um, if we're not feeling that great or we're feeling like lonely, we don't want to be a downer to someone. So we don't reach out. Hmm. Well. I'm not lonely. I got plenty of friends. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he, 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 he talks to me all the time. Uh, what, what does he need? But no, actually, uh, yeah. bring up a good point. Uh, there are probably uh, uh, three or four people that I call maybe every month, month and a half. I know my wife has the same thing with uh, some relatives, uh, especially some that are getting older in age back on the East Coast, uh, where originally came from. And so once a month or so, she's in touch with probably uh, uh, the ideal situation, maybe uh, half a dozen or a dozen people on a very regular basis. She's active on the social media and things like that, which, uh, you know, I'm probably more active than John is. But there are only two or three people that maybe every month, month and a half, uh, I'll be in touch with on a regular basis just to see how they're doing. But I tend to lose touch other than through, let's say, Facebook, which I try to keep primarily for closer friends, people I have a real relationship with. Uh, so what's the key to, you know, of us? Oh, is it wrong? Should we try to change? Or, uh, I mean, I know that you try to make us feel guilt free, but is there a way that we can <laughs> change so that we can stay in touch with people more frequently if we don't? Yeah, well, I love all the questions, right? It, it, it's such a personal decision. I mean, John, you know, when you first started talking, you know, it sounds like your life is pretty full. And so maybe that's partly why you don't keep in touch is because there's like less of a need to, right? And, and all of us have a different level of, um, you know, maybe interest or commitment to maintaining friendships. And some of us only want a few, you know, deeper ones that we really, you know, can connect with someone we've known for a long time, perhaps, or some people want more, you know, a more of an, you know, the quality quantity, right? There's a whole possibility there and what is the right kind of fit for us. But um, I think that that's part of what you get to think about is, you know, who are those people that really matter to you and how many of those people. And so, you know, we can't, you know, I, I had one person I was talking to, I mean, he maintains like. 20 deep relationships. And, um, you know, that's a lot. That's a lot. Now, that's just my opinion. I don't, I don't think I personally have 20 deep relationships that I maintain on a regular basis. You know, my capacity, my bandwidth, let's say, is, is smaller than that. So it's kind of like you got to be in harmony 
and feel, um, you know, at ease or at peace, I guess, with the numbers of people that you're in touch with. But I guess specifically, I was referring to people who are one more connection and are feeling isolated, but they just, they don't reach out. Yeah. And sometimes they get lucky because they have a friend who's always the instigator and they get the call regularly. But it's kind of unfortunate when we want something, but then we don't take the steps to, to make it happen. Yeah, that's a good point. A lot of people, uh, particularly as you get older, uh, get isolated. And um, it is difficult, I think, for those folks to make that, to reach out, to make that offer first, to make the first uh, call. Uh, yeah. They'd love to get a call, but they just don't want to pick up the phone. And sometimes they ruminate about, you know, maybe I shouldn't, it's a bad time. And do they want to hear from me? I, I think a lot of it is psychological. I agree with you. I agree. And maybe they feel guilty, like, you know, they procrastinate. Maybe they got a call from this person, you know, a couple months ago and they never returned the call or email sure. or whatever. And so, and so then we feel like, oh, you know, I'm too embarrassed. I, I you know, it's kind of thoughtless. Or, not to or it. it could be the Aunt Eloise. And every time you reach out and call, it just, you wish you hadn't from the time you picked up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Aunt Eloise, well, yeah. Right. And we all know about Eloise, her. Yeah. Eloise. And by the way, I did a, a search on the uh, internet, and I'm only going to offend about 14 people in all of America. So I chose Aunt Eloise <laughs> as the <laughs> mythical. Uh, uh, but but sometimes uh, it becomes difficult, or, uh, but, or especially as people get older, maybe they've had a, a sickness, uh, they had breast cancer, they had prostate cancer, they had also, or somebody in their family passed away, and you just didn't hear about it. And so a lot of people feel, well, if I call, I'm going to get involved in that kind of stuff, and I don't want to hear it. I don't want to be the one that has dredged it up again. But on the other side, mm -hmm. um, even with the people that I call from time to time, and I know that they're probably going to have some issues, and it was just good to hear and, and, and hear their voice. So maybe we take a different attitude and maybe pick one or two people that we haven't called that we wanted to. And uh, so, John, call somebody today. Not me. I'm gonna mm -hmm. not, don't call me. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, I mean, I think we need to, you know, give ourselves some uh, wide berth here, have some compassion. Like, you know, if we if we were the one that dropped the ball to go ahead and do it um, and just reach out and apologize. Like, oh, I know you called me. I'm so sorry. I wish... Wish I'd call you sooner, but hey, I'm calling you now. I mean, in fact, I just did this recently with my uncle. I hadn't talked to him in a while, and it was like we had such a beautiful conversation. It was so good to connect with him, and it's like I'm sorry I didn't call sooner, and yet I'm calling you now, and I'm thinking of you, and and so that, it just felt really good, and that's part of the reason I brought up this topic. But um, the other thing that's a good uh, strategy is that to kind of decide before you even hang up, maybe. When do you want to talk again and actually schedule something in your calendar, right? I'm a big fan of this kind of thing. And so I often do that with some of my friends is that, okay, look, you want to talk in a month or two months or three months. And I know there's a decision and maybe an awkward, like, well, I'd like to talk to you next week. And the other person's like, well, how about in two months? You know, there's going to be moments like that, but, but basically have it as a regular practice. So you get to, you know, maintain these, these relationships. And the other thing can be just like a short check-in, right? Um, maybe send them an audio message or something like that. You can, you know, text an audio message to someone. And just hearing someone's voice is like, I get a, you know, a voice from, from my sister sometimes. And it's just like, I'm all lit up. I get to hear what's, you know, what's going on in that moment with her. And it just, it, you know, I, it makes me want to reach out to her you know, right back. And so, um, yeah, there's kind of different ways to play. You know, we have some technology that can help us. There's calendars. There's... Um, messages and voicemail, even video messages, right? So, um, yeah, I invite people to get kind of creative with what would help them create the kind of connections that they want to have. Yeah, those are those are good practical advice uh, uh, pieces of advice. I, I like that. Thank you. I, I want to just mention one thing, and that is the uh, uh, social media. I have a friend who uh, he he gets from a bunch of people, he gets these funny videos and he gets the funny sayings about old people. And it's all comedy and it's all, it's all very funny. And they're, sometimes they're road signs that have a funny uh, double meaning to them. Uh, he has a mailing list that he sends all of this stuff to probably three times a week. Oh, so he's For the him, one. 
Tell him to take he's, me off his list. He's the guy. <laughs> so, and he's he's well aware that you know not everybody wants to get this stuff. But his attitude, he said this a number of times. His attitude is, I'm thinking of you. Mm. You're on my mailing list. You may be only you know one of fifty people getting this stuff, but these are all my friends. This is mm. random. I'm sending you this stuff. So you have a good day and have a laugh. That's his way of keeping in touch. Now it's not very mm -hmm. personal. You know, it's just a bunch of because more in touch than you are with some people than I am. So maybe yeah. he's got a point there. Yeah, and I, I, I guess everybody's different, right, Michelle? Yeah, yeah, and I think also that to kind of bring some joy to someone else's life bring us joy, right? It's kind of like, you know, when we volunteer and we're of service to another, mm -hmm. the giver and the receiver gets to receive something beautiful. Yeah. On the other hand, I'll go back to your advice of, uh, you know, uh, scheduling. Pick up the phone, call them, make, you know, make a connection. Again, renew the connection and uh, schedule the next one. I like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.